Hello there, this is DBT, and these are the rooms. And alright, let's continue playing some more Asphalt 9 on Nintendo Switch, and today we're gonna be driving this beauty. One of the few Ferraris that I actually really like, and that is the Ferrari La Ferrari. That's right, we're gonna be playing with this in multiplayer in Ghost Season. Now, this is a continuation of my exploration on the new multiplayer system recently added on the Nintendo Switch. Well, technically it was also added in the global version, but it didn't stay there for long. In which, now the leagues are a little bit mixed. And for example, right now I am in the Gold League, as you can see over here, which normally would limit me to only use Class B cars, but now it also allows me to use some Class A, like for example, the Bentley Continental GT Speed, which I only have a 3 stars and haven't upgraded, or the LaFerrari, that's right, being a Class A, low Class A, but I can use it against a bunch of Class B cars, which is definitely interesting. Now, I don't have the car fully upgraded just yet, you can see that I'm still missing some upgrades on top speed and handling, but I think it should be performant enough, so let's give it a shot, because man, I've been wanting to drive this thing in multiplayer for a long time, and it's finally the time to do it and honestly some of these low uh, low rank cars from a different class are cars that I haven't played much in multiplayer because they normally don't perform very well I tend to load, lose a lot of points when I use them and I rank down so I can use them again until I rank up and it's a it's a very strange situation so now this is actually gonna give me the opportunity to play with some of these low class or rather low rank uh, cars from a higher class because again, a low class A against class B should be a pretty decent fight. So that is what I expect to see. And whether I get W's or short of W's or not, at least I should get decent results overall. And yeah, that will allow me to use these cars a bit more. Like I said, this car, for example, I have never, oh god, I have never really used. And it is a shame because it's such an iconic Ferrari. And I know that there's the LaFerrari Aperta, but you know that I'm not much into roofless cars. So I really like much more coupe and I want to use them, and it also sounds amazing. I, I, a lot of, of, not a lot, but there's a very good chunk of cars that sound very, very, very bad in this game. This is not one of them. Whether or not it actually sounds like, like the actual LaFerrari in real life, I have no idea, because I know nothing about Ferrari engines, but the point is that it still sounds amazing over here. It has some very nice broomy noises, and I appreciate it. Now, being the, the general rule of the low, low rank cars is that they, are not amazing performance so this doesn't drift amazing or anything the handling is kind of bad but still should be pretty usable and just like that i get my first w against another laferrari slightly more upgraded than mine clicking house which is faster f12 which is faster essenza elba and two husarias very nice first result i'll take it and by the way, another good side effect of playing with this type of cars that I would normally not play with is for example the fact that matte and dual colors, so long as they're available for the car that you're looking into, are only unlockable through playing multiplayer. And like I said, normally this is a car that I would not use in multiplayer, but now that I have a better chance to do it, I'm gonna do it! For now I just changed the color to one of the factory ones for this car, but yeah, I'm looking forward to eventually unlock the um, the colors or, or rather the color options for through multiplayer races you know like i mentioned the mat and the dual colors man that that's gonna look super dope and we'll get there eventually now i don't know that i'll do all 26 races in this particular multiplayer series but over time it will be doable and trust me it might sound like i mentioned in the previous video the way that the system is set up right now where the pool of card changes every two weeks based on on the, the series that you're playing on means that I'm not gonna get back to this particular pool of cars until two months from now so it's, just, it's a long wait but it's still better than what how much I've played with this car during the last two years and a half that I played this game simply because it's not a good car to be used now granted I know that there's an argument to be made about well if you were a good driver no matter that the car is bad you could get some decent results and to be fair I think I could get some half decent results with this car if I tried to but especially in class A and more so in class S you tend to encounter people that are already from the get driving really good cars and if you want to get any amount of serious scores you want to be competitive driving some of the best cars that you have so yeah, it's a bit of a weird situation. It's very hit and miss, but now I really have a reason to be driving this thing. So that's kind of dope. That's why I'm excited about this multiplayer system. But all right, beat everything, which is a Glickenhaus, another LaFerrari, an F12 TDF, DDS Superleggera, Glickenhaus, Elva, and an Asterion. Oh yeah, baby! 
Oof, in this particular track, there's a very good chance that the um, SCG, that one, is going to beat me. Simply because it's very, very fast. But anyway, um, there is a bit of a situation, a, a small issue, not necessarily an issue, but a consideration to have in terms of this multiplayer system. As much as I'm praising it for allowing me to use some of these cards that normally I would not be able to, it still makes it so that... For example, right now that I'm in the Gold League, which is class mainly Class B cards, you can still bring some of the very, very strong Class B cards into the race, and it's the same for all the other leagues. Like in the Silver League, while I could bring some low Class uh, Class B cards, even low Class A with the Vulcan, um, I could still use the Arenera Husaria, which is a very, very strong Class E. So they're not making it so that it's exactly all of the cars are around the same rank or anything, but at least the way that it's mixed, it allows a little bit more flexibility as to which cars you're going to bring into the fight. Now, the problem is that I am a little bit afraid, and I haven't gotten there, but I'm, a, I'm afraid that once I get to the next league, to the uh, Platinum, and even more so in the Elite League, I'm still going to be finding the same situation where, sure, I would like to bring in the Platinum, for example. I would like to bring the, the Centenario, which is not an amazing class... Not, not a good class S, not an amazing uh, class A replacement. But if it's still going to be competing against a Valhalla, a Valhalla is going to absolutely destroy the Centenary all day long. So it's still going to be a situation where the strongest cars are still around and they're still going to wreck havoc. But in saying that, I did get first place. Let's go, baby. I don't know if they're farming, complete, to be completely honest. Maybe they are. But yeah, a bit of a Ferrari, Glickenhaus, Ferrari, F12, TDF, and an NSX. All right. That's a bunch of W so far. And just now I was changing again the color of the car because reasons. And I just realized I never really paid attention to the fact that this is actually not a slow class A car. No, it's not super fast by any means. <laughs> it's not the super fast. <laughs> I get it. The, the Ferrari super fast. Okay. Um, it's not extremely fast or anything, but it does have the average uh, top speed for a class A car, which is 360 kilometers an hour. So it's not bad. And on saying that, I realized that it's about the same speed as the Glickenhaus. I mean, I do believe that the Glickenhaus is still a little bit faster, but nowhere near as fast. The, the difference of the speed is nowhere near as big as I thought it was going to be. So there is that. I'm telling you, the LaFerrari, I remember driving it a bit more in the global version. And I remember it not being straight up horrendous. Um, again, somehow, somewhat bad handling and bad drifting but if you if you can make up for it with some decent moves and good driving and maybe a speed trick here and there it can still definitely get you some good results maybe in the same way that the lambo super veloce the the aventador sv it's you know not amazing but if you drive it well enough it can still give you some really good results though to be fair that is a faster car than this one but still all right, what did I beat this time? I didn't quite pay attention. Um, VLF, much faster than my LaFerrari. There's an Apollo IE and another two LaFerraris, of which I am the second lowest ranked. Nice, I guess. Now, if you know me, you know that I don't like black cars, but I had to bring it in black just because, you know, I'm doing a bit of a tour of the, of the color. Now, I saw a Banda over here, so that means that I'm getting close to the next league where I'm going to start facing more cars of class A and even some class S uh, from the Platinum League. So, all right, let's see how good can my LaFerrari put up against them. And even though this is black, this is the regular LaFerrari, it's not the Aperta. The Aperta also has some red lines, if I remember correctly. I mean, obviously you can differentiate them by the fact that it doesn't have a roof. <laughs> but leaving that aside, I think the, the main livery for the Aperta has this uh, black uh, excuse me, this red lines uh, in the hood, on the hood. Yeah. All right, whatever is that first place, he just shot ahead of everybody so damn quick. That second place is doing a very good job of staying ahead of me, but I don't know. Let's see if I can pull something crazy from my sleeve and get back my second place. Now, in case you didn't notice, I don't know if I mentioned it at start. This is ghost season, so no collisions, which makes it a lot more skill based because it, it has nothing to do with knockdowns or oh he punted me onto the wall or even um, slipstream where oh I should stay behind you to get as much nitro and then I'll just try to pass you at the very end no 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 this is more like a TLE but against other people in real time and oh he was lagging come on come on come on come on oh I took the lead I took the lead let's go second place 
Ferrari power, baby. I don't know. It feels weird to say that. But anyway. Uh, first place was the Vanda. Holy moly. The Vanda destroyed us all. Jeez. Well, to be fair, the Vanda is not a very fast car, but it accelerates like there's no tomorrow. And against a bunch of LaFerraris and an F12 TDF and an Acura, it makes sense that it just completely obliterated everybody. In spite of the fact that it's a slower car, but hey, that acceleration ain't no joke, man. I tell you, I'm telling you. Now, here's a bit of an unfortunate situation. Um, granted, we're still not even halfway through the season. But I am in the gold league. I'm approaching the next league. I am, what, 12 points from reaching platinum. But I'm already position 827, which means that not a ton of people are playing it. And generally speaking, when you encounter this situation, by the time I get to the higher league, I'm going to be facing against people using really good cars. Because that's normally how it goes when you're closing on the top 500 players, for example. So we'll see. Hopefully, uh, since there's still over a week left to play this multiplayer season, more people are going to be jumping in. And I do really, really hope that more people jump in. Because, not for this video, obviously, because this video is dedicated to this particular car, but when I'm playing by myself, I don't want to find myself in the position where I reach the next league and instantly jump to my best car because everybody's using their best car. And, you know, the only way to compete is gonna be bringing beasts of the class. Which is normally what you expect to see. What everybody with... Oh, God, what was that? What normally people are gonna be doing. But my point on saying that I hope more people jump in is because the more people that are playing, the less chance that everybody, all the people in the lobby, are gonna be bringing beast, which allows for some uh, bringing some different, not necessarily beastly cars or anything. So I do hope that more people over time jump in. And by the way, I switched to my favorite Ferrari color, um, this strange kind of bluish, desaturated gray. I don't know what to call it. Uh, it's like a dual tone and it looks very dope. A bunch of Ferraris have this and I really, really like it. So I decided to use it for this race. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, again, once more people jump in, the bigger chance to, to, to continue to bring not necessarily meta cars into the races and instead just have some fun with weird cars because, well, there's a possibility to use them. So let's make the most out of it. Um, and another thing that I thought was very interesting is the fact that the pool of cars, it's, uh, there's an odd number of pool of cars. So you might be thinking, what, why does that even matter? Because if it was an odd number, it would mean that this particular pool of cars would always be Ghost or Ghost Slipstream. And then the next pool of cars would always be Classic. But by having it being an odd number of pools, this, the current pool, it's in Ghost. And by the time we cycle through all of the pools, next time that this pool comes out or comes up, it's going to be on Classic. So it's not always going to be Ghost, and that's definitely all right. All right, so I got destroyed by a DBS Super Legera, F12 TDF, and a ZR1. I did beat two Glickenhaus and a Husaria. Okay, that's still something. Oh, yeah, and just like that, someone already brought a Valhalla to the race. So, um, yeah, I don't expect my LaFerrari to do much against a Valhalla. So let's see what it can do against everything else. I did see a Centenario over here, so I am curious. I've never seen a, a fight between a Centenario and a LaFerrari in this game. Because they, well, they're in different classes normally, so they would not match together. The only way that you would see this is if you jump into club races, if you coordinate with someone and... Okay, you bring this car, I'm gonna bring this and let's race them. But um, that, you know, that's not always doable. That's not very, very uh, likely to happen. Uh, given that everybody is busy with their own lives and by the time they jump into the game I don't know that a lot of people are very willing to go in there. Ooh, yeah, let's get into races that don't give us any rewards and just waste our fuel Which is one problem that I've always had with this whole thing of the club races the fact that it uses your fuel It shouldn't. I, that's why I liked so much uh, Quick Race in the Switch version of, of this game, the one that I'm playing Because in Quick Race you can play with whatever car that you own and whatever rank that you own it and you get to play it in whichever track that you want, so long as it's available in the track list. Uh, decide how many uh, AI opponents to race with. And guess what? It uses no fuel, so you can use it as much as you want. You can enjoy it. You can enjoy your car without having to worry about, oh my god, I get to play first, I need someone else to play, and then I'm still going to be wasting my fuel. So even if you're driving, a, I don't know, a Jesk or whatever with with six stars that only has three fuel, you can play it without problems. And oh my god, I managed to get into the the, the, the Platinum League. Let's go, baby! Look at that. The Valhalla indeed destroyed everybody, but I did beat the Centenario in spite of the fact that I am like 400, a little under 400 points on the rank, but still dope. 
Uh, I mean, not that I'm normally too happy about a Ferrari beating uh, Lambo, but hey, come on. Given the situation, it's fine. Uh, then uh, F2TDF, Glickenhaus, two Apollo IEs, and Anasterion. All right, you know what? I think that was a pretty good result overall with the LaFerrari. I'm happy that I'm able to play with this car where it's somewhat competitive. It might not be any king by any means, but it definitely is competitive and that's kind of nice. And by the way, it is kind of weird that you can hear some of the noises of the race, even though normally this is completely silent. Silent. This is one of these issues that was introduced with the current patch on the sound problems that I've mentioned before in the previous videos, but whatever. Just wanted to look at my car a little bit because it's so beautiful. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, why don't you check this other ones precisely where I was investigating how this works in the previous uh, leagues, or this other video that it is about, I don't know what, but I made it, so it's probably good. But well, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody, and stay safe. Bye-bye.